Good morning, everyone. Uh, Greg here at Worldwide Sale on Marketing. These are very stressful times. Uh, the world seems to be falling apart. Uh, so to do whatever we can to help uh, our members uh, get their way through this uh, crisis, I've asked our uh, tax and business advisor, Frank Vaughan, to join us um, to walk us through some of the things you can do um, to get some of this government stimulus money uh, as best we can. And uh, things are changing by almost by the hour. Um, so by the time this conference call is over, things may be out of date, but we'll do the best we can. Welcome to uh, the call, Frank, and thank you for joining us this morning. Hello, everyone. I'm Frank. So, um, uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a stressful time for everyone. Um, I know that um, in my own client base, all I've been doing is literally running from client to client, trying to get to them to say the things that they can do. Um, some people are in more financial distress than others. So some of the planning is not only just to if you're in an okay position, to make sure you wall chest cash so that that way you can actually survive out the time. Uh, out of work for you guys, pretty much out of work. Um, but it's also uh, a factor of making sure those people who are in great distress are getting the most they can from the ATO. So there's a number of things that I know many accounts aren't doing and we've been flat out because we've been doing them that we'll try and run you through today and you can approach your own advisor or whatever however you'd like to try and do it. So, look, the first thing that everyone's heard about is this government stimulus and people are thinking they're getting checked for $10,000 or $100,000 and the like. Essentially, it's only available to those of you who are employ people or employ yourself through a structure like a company or a trust. So I don't know how many of you are in that situation, but the stimulus will only work with those clients who are actually employing people themselves. So to run it through, there's two different ways that the stimulus is working. So the ATO is talking about and putting these numbers out of $20,000 and $100,000. Well, it's actually a little bit deceitful because it's not quite that. So what happens is if you're employing people, when you do your quarterly activity statement or your monthly activity statement, you report the amount of wages you, you will pay and on there you'll put down the amount of withholding or wage taxes you take out of the staff's tax. Now, what the government are doing essentially is trying to pay that wage tax for you. Now, some clients, so there's a raft of people here and there'll be a raft of different scenarios that go on. So it's quite large. So run through a couple of scenarios and if it doesn't apply to you, we can talk about it after or we can go through those scenarios because it may be more applicable to you. So firstly, for those of you who might only have one staff member, it might be yourself and you're employed by a trust or a company, what would happen in that situation is you may only have a small wage that you're going to put through. It might only be a thousand dollars with five hundred, you know, four hundred dollars worth of withholding or less, or a hundred dollars worth of withholding. Those clients that are essentially going to not put more than ten thousand worth of wage tax through will only have what they'll get in the if they're quarterly will get the amount of ten thousand dollars by the twenty eighth of April. So if you fill out your quarterly business activity statement with the wages on it, if you only put a thousand in there, the government will automatically give you ten thousand credit. Now the credit won't be paid to you in your bank account. What they'll do, they'll get your BAS. So if you're registered for GST and wage taxes, you'll lodge it like normal. Then what they'll do is they'll get that ten thousand dollars if you only got a thousand worth of wages in there, and they'll put it as a credit on your tax account. So that credit will then pay the BAS that you've just lodged and then it'll be applied to any other debt that you may have. So if you've got debt from December or previous periods, they will offset that first and anything that's left will get refunded back to you. So I know some of this isn't straightforward. It's all over the place, but this is it depends on how you're registered. So that, that's for small, those of you who are only employing a small number of staff and it's less than 10,000 will go in the March BAS and you're registered quarterly. So now if you're registered quarterly but you've got a larger amount, say you pay $5,000 worth of wage tax, what they'll do is they'll match that 5,000, again, offset, give you 10,000 as a credit onto your account, they'll offset against your BAS and pay any balance. Now if you are a monthly payer of wage tax, what they'll do is get you a March amount that you have lodged. So January and February you may have already lodged. And then what they'll do is the March number, 
they'll get whatever you put in that W-2 box on your BAS, if you do your BAS to yourself, with the amount of wage tax for that month, they'll multiply it by three and assume that that's what your wage taxes for the quarter are. So with that one, what quite often happens is, let's say you had 10,000 worth of wage taxes that you put on your, on your activity statement for the month of March. If it's for the month of March, they'll get that, multiply it by three, gives you a $30,000 credit on your ATO account. From that, then they'll do the same thing. They'll take off the BAS that you just lodged, the debt that you owe, and then offset any other debt and refund the balance back to you. So that sort of process is the same process down the line. It's just whether you're registered quarterly or monthly will determine how the ATO is going to actually calculate how much you're going to get back. Now, the critical thing here is the ATO talks about minimum of 10 grand or a minimum of 20 grand. What they're going to do is give you 10 grand for March and June. And then if you're still employing people, and this is critical for people in this room because your business is all shut, is to still show that you're going to be employing people, either put yourself on the books, etc. in July, that you still exist and you're still there and they'll pay you another $10,000 for the July to September period. So the criticalness of it is if you've got a structure, a company or a trust, you keep it operating, you keep that registration going and you show that you're still trying to employ people in July. Now, that's going to not necessarily be easy for some of you because if there's no business, you're not going to any staff you're paying. So it may be a factor of putting a small wage through to you. We don't exactly know what that looks like. The ATO is still not giving us a clear indication what we have to do by the July period to make sure that we're going to get that second round of 10. Now... For the $100,000 amount they keep talking about, they're only going to give you $50,000 for this March to June period and another $50,000 up to for July to September. So how they're going to work it out is whatever supplemental stimulus amount you get based on what I've just spoken about, they're going to give you that same amount in July to September period. So, for example, I know... There are some large salons out there who are paying wages of like $30,000 um, a month. So there, there are quite large salons, as we all know. What they, they will do, they lodge their, if they're on monthly, they'll lodge that $30,000 in, in March, for example. Three times $30,000 is $90,000. The ATO goes, well, we're only going to give you $50,000 of that back as a credit. So that will then be used to offset their bass. And that will automatically mean that there's no more stimulus available for them for April, May and June, but they will get another $50,000 or the other half of it in July to September. So the system is not easy. The system is actually quite convoluted. So I tend to find doing it case by case is the only way that you can do this. You can't blanket it. But if you get the idea that if you're a monthly payer, they multiply the wage tax amount by three, that's what you're going to get back. Now, there is planning in that because, as we all know, the more you put in the March quarter, well, the ATO is going to match it up to $50,000 for March to June. Obviously, there's, there's anti-avoidance provisions there that say you shouldn't be manipulating your wages. But, of course, you know, there are going to be clients that you've had to, or staff that you've had to terminate that will increase the withholding. Staff may be asking for annual leave to be paid out. The mask for long service leave to be paid out. If that was to happen in the March quarter, that would probably be a better period to do it than a later period. But it's not, you can't manipulate it and be shown to be creating a scheme to try and get more tax back. So, what you've got to do is look at your situation, see who you've had to, you know, terminate, what the termination payments are, and make sure that you're dealing with that before the 31st of March to try and maximise your position if possible. Which is tomorrow. So, Correct. So that's why I've been working <laughs> since last Friday with no sleep, trying to get to everyone to say, well, are you terminating? If you are, terminate now. If people want the annual leave, pay it out now. And we're not trying to artificially manipulate it. It's like those staff generally have no income anyway, very little backup in the, in the beauty industry anyway. And what we find is they need the cash anyway, so there's no real artificial manipulation because we're just literally trying to keep people alive. So that is the process that the ATO is going through. I know it sounds messy. It's because depending on whether you're registered monthly or quarterly, then it comes down to how much wages tax you're paying will affect the amount that you're going to get. So 
Again, for those who are smaller, who aren't going to pay more than $10,000 for between March and June, they'll just get an automatic $10,000. For those over that, they're going to get up to $50,000, but the mechanism varies depending on how much a month or quarter you're putting through. So, yes, it's not straightforward. Yes, it's not, not easy, and there's no easy way to explain it, but hopefully I'm giving you an idea of how it might work. For you, I don't know where all of you sit, so I don't know if all of you are sole practitioners maybe running into a trust or whether you've got five or 10 or 15 staff. Depending on which way it is, it'll fall into usually one of those categories that I've mentioned. Now, that's on the stimulus side. We'll come back to that with questions in a minute. The next thing is, I don't know if any of you have got apprentices working for you. Um, those that do, there is a, a wage subsidy of 50% that's out there. Um, but that's been worked through with industry bodies and the apprenticeship board and all that sort of thing. So we still haven't got any clear indication. Some of you may know more about that than me. Um, we are still um, working through trying to get the stimulus done for clients, but I know some people have been approaching it. They're saying early April there should be something available with respect to apprentices. So I don't know mechanisms very much around that, but that's something that you know, to follow up if you do have those apprentices. I won't go into too much detail because a lot of people may not have those apprentices either. The next thing that um, we're, we're also finding is if you are currently holding a large amount of ATO debt, this is available to everyone, regardless of whether you act as a sole trader or you on your own or whether you have a company or a trust, the ATO is being very flexible with existing debt. So... Just make sure if you're calling or your advisors are calling that they know the parameters because many are doing it wrong and we're having to try and fix it, which is making it hard. If you have debt on your current account, the ATO, within reason, we've been getting $50 payment plans a month in place for clients with $100,000 on their account for six months and then we have to renegotiate things. So they just pay $50 a month for the next six months till September and their payment plan essentially will not default and that will be fine and then we renegotiate in September. So for those of you who have a lot of ATO debt, there is that available out there. You have to be quite, how can I put it, fully with the ATO because the ATO at the moment is under so much pressure they're pulling all staff from every department, audit, administration into the debt department to try and deal with the load of debt. And half of them don't know the parameters, don't know what's possible. And we quite often get told you can't do that. And we're like, well, no, you can because we've done 15 already today. You need to go here, go here, and yes, it's available, or ask your supervisor. So there is that relief out there, which is quite good for those clients that are carrying, you know, any sort of debt, you know, whether it's a thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand. That gives you a lot of space to be able to actually deal with it. Sometimes we've been able to actually get them totally free and you may be in that situation so we're finding that the gyms the beauty salons etc that we do we say you're in that industry and normally the officer will not even want to take 50 bucks or just say we'll just defer the whole lot till september for you and renegotiate then because they know you have no business you can't offer frank a question on that can i just yeah. butt in there if if uh, the people on this call and, and watching the recording have some debt and they want to get rid of it and they can't get through to the ATO because the ATO is so flat out. I mean, I, I've sat on the phone to the ATO for two hours and still not got through. What do you yeah. do? Well, look, you, what you've got to try and do is engage an advisor of some sort. So I'm not pitching my service, whether it's me or someone, just make sure you get hold of some accountant or some tax agent. They put you on their list, generally we have more access to the ATO because they know that we're dealing with hundreds of clients all the time. So we know we can get through the calls much quicker than the public because they don't quite know what they're doing. Like the public's not sure how to deal with it. Where they know that we know bang, 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 and we can get the calls and the volume through quicker. So we generally have more access to the ATO than the general public. So that's one way you can do it is engage a tax advisor or something like that. We'll put you on their list and they, they can make the call on your behalf. Yes, it might cost you a little bit of time with the accountant, but the reality is if you're not paying tax for a net six months and they can get that for you, it's been well worth the cost of the call. The other thing that the ATO has been able to do and we've been successful in doing is they will defer your March and your June BAS statements, so your GST, till September. So you've got to do this. A lot of accountants aren't aware of it. You can actually ring up 
um, and say, look, we've got no income, it's dead. Can we please have delay on any payment that's due on either March or June? Now, March, you'll have some normally because you'd have operations before it got shut down. June, you probably won't have a huge amount of debt, but there might be some flow on, some people need to pay you later on or something like that that's come into that, that June quarter. Or depending on if we can get through this and they start reopening things in late June. So we've been actively doing for our clients is trying to defer both March and June. So any debt that may arise that's not covered by the stimulus that we spoke about at the beginning, we're saying, please, just we're not going to pay it till September. The ATO can actually register that in their system. Their systems are still in disarray. So we're lodging marches and they're putting notes that, yes, June should be done, but there is no box on their system yet because their IT infrastructure just hasn't been updated quick enough. So that is actually out there as well. So you essentially can, in some situations, you cannot pay any more tax from now till September, essentially, across the board. Now, so that's the, the, the next thing. So I'll go to another one that you can do that many people aren't. The ATO has also said, look, you're out of work. You've got no income coming through. If you do pay quarterly instalments, so I know Greg does, and some of his entities, and we've discussed this, so hope you don't mind me saying, Greg. Hmm. What we can do is we can actually apply to the ATO when they send that pink slip out, or if you're electronic by your, your inbox, saying, please pay this quarterly amount for you personally because you've got business income. The ATO is actually allowing us to vary those back to zero and request a credit for September and December's quarter. Okay. Um, it's, it's more business income. So what it's about is to try and then give you free flow because you probably won't have any any income this year because you're going to have the next, you know, three, four months potentially with no income. You would have had income in the first part. The expenses are still operating along. So you'll still have registrations and other things, telephones and things that you're still paying. So your profit is likely to drop. So the ATO is allowing us to for businesses to actually vary those installments back and request a credit for September and December that you would have already paid. So it's another way of just trying to release a bit of pressure off, get some cash flow back. Now, if you do have ATO debt, those credits will offset your debt, but it means then obviously you're not going to get your money back, but it reduces the debt load you're going to pay later on as well. So that's something that can also work. So we found that that can be very helpful for those that receive those quarterly um, what we call instalments. That can certainly um, work quite well. Um, now, the other thing that is out there is, and what we're finding is the comments around, around superannuation. So you've got to make an application to the ATO. I tend to not try and do that until the last resort for clients because I find that obviously we're selling in a down market. The reality is you're selling shares at a cheaper price to get the cash out. So perhaps it's not the, the best move. I'm not a financial planner, I must say, but it's just something where we're saying, well, I'd use that as the, step, the, the focus of last resort unless you have to. So you can get $10,000 out of your super this financial year if you meet the criteria and 10000 next year. Frank, that's, okay. uh, that's assuming that uh, people in their super funds have cash because a lot of super funds keep some cash, yeah? Yeah, correct. And it's a matter of just saying, you know, and you've got to look at your own situation because some clients have a lot in shares, which means you'd have to sell the shares to get the cash to pull the money out. So that means you're selling shares at a low point in the market. So that's why we always try and do it as the last resort. So that one I tend to not go through a huge amount. I just mentioned it's there. And if you are at the best desperation, that's probably a way to go um, to try and help you get a bridge the gap if you need to. Now... There's all the other things out there like your incomes would have all dropped significantly if not to nothing. So there is the, the application, which I'm sure you've probably already done with Centrelink. We're not Centrelink experts, but I point clients there who have got no income at least try and register um, to get the coronavirus payment. Now, that may change as we speak today because obviously there's a minimum wage coming out for people to stood down that supposedly the government's going to release today. We've only heard little bits. We don't know detail yet. Nothing's been released to any tax advisor yet. So they're doing this all on the run, literally from word of mouth is what's happening. So the Prime Minister is going to make an announcement this afternoon, we believe, with the detail. Um, we won't know full details for another few days from Treasury. 
but they're saying it's probably going to be fifteen hundred dollars and some sort of percentage of your normal wage that you would get. Per we don't know the mechanism. Don't know how. Yeah, correct. We don't know how that's going to look yet. We've got no no information. So a lot of clients are saying apply for the coronavirus payment regardless, and then let's see what happens with this minimum wage. Because the minimum wage they're putting through is actually higher than I think the thousand forty two you you're allowed to under the coronavirus payment. But we don't know if that's all going to change or what's going on. So it's not making enough sense to us to connect the dots together because one system is not talking to the other from what we can see at this point. But they so can we just we them. just clarify something there? My understanding, um, Frank, is that the government will today announce fortnightly payments of up to fifteen hundred dollars for staff right. that you keep on on board is that, that's right that's your understanding of it that's right and that's so those of you who are in trusts or companies and you're on the books you'll qualify for that as well so this is people who own the salon on the yep. books as a wage earner that correct. that will qualify them correct they are also talking about sole traders we haven't seen any detail of it so if you're just operating as you and you don't have a company or trust they are saying this may be available to you as well, but again, there's just no no information that's been done on the fly, and literally only bits have been sent out last night this morning. I'm in mean, the media, so we just don't know yet. Now, obviously, the, there is another thing you can do, which you probably already all looked at and considered, is having the discussion with your um, your bank, and also looking at the option of freezing the, the payments. Now, obviously, most of the banks are going to go yes because your industry what our experience has been but they will still add interest to your loan but you'll get six months the aba is already telling us in the background which i think they only released yesterday but we've been told for a week or two that they, if it goes on for longer they'll extend that for longer whether it's true or not we don't know until there's more detail but we're getting that indication as accountants from the people higher up in the banks that if it needs to go on they're just going to try and roll it on further but that's all here so so one of the things I'm doing with all my gyms and any beauty salons I look after, they're all on freeze. They were from the day that, that it all got shut down and they're aware that the interest is, is growing. Some of them have savings, so they don't want their debts to go up. They're just saying, well, look, we'll just pay the interest bit so we're not making the loan bigger um, for the moment um, and just rolling that through. Frank, what about... Um, uh the uh, people who are uh, renting their premises from um, a landlord, um, they now can no longer be evicted, is that correct? Yeah, well, there's, there, that hasn't quite been legislated yet. The state governments will have to put through legislation, but my experience has been most landlords know, like uh, even the gym I attend, they have actually frozen the rent. They've just gone, well, we just won't do it. Now, some of the landlords are going, we'll freeze it, but you're going to have to back pay it. Some are just saying, well, it's rent free um just when you can we'll restart when the business can reopen it just will what they're trying to say is on commercial side you need to negotiate quite heavily with the landlords we are having some success um with some westfields and amps they're really difficult shopping centers if you're in a shopping center situation um smaller landlords are a mix so what we're finding is most are really good and then you've got the really difficult ones that just want no i'm just going to i want payment and too bad so there is a mixed bag out there. So it's really about negotiating and negotiating hard. Um, we've done a lot of that for our clients, particularly with the larger shopping centres, um, and been quite fully with it. We've managed to get with AMP a number of clients with quite extended rent free periods. Um, so literally, they don't even have to pay it back. Um, well, the point there, of course, the point there, of course, Frank, is that if a landlord throws you out, they're not going to find anyone else to rent it anyway. Correct, and they're better off to have a tenant in there so that then when you do pick up, at least they're going to start picking up straight away and they don't have to find a tenant when there may be less businesses around. So that's the sell that we do to them is like, we're willing to stay here, we can't work, you know that, but at least you know that when we start, you've got someone here and you don't have to try and find another tenant when half the business might be closed and not, not going to start up again. So you use all those things in your wall chest, but again, you can have very difficult landlords who just won't, just won't do anything and yes the, the laws are being directed to the state governments as we speak the state governments are trying to put through non-eviction clauses into their their acts because it's not done at the federal level it's all done at the state base level so they're all trying to put those through their their relevant um, parliaments as we speak okay thank you for that folks anyone who has a question can you put your hand up please 
Um, Jackie, can you unmute yourself, please? Um, I'll do it. There you are. Go for it. Ready. Um, Frank, we're, um, so we're a sole trader. Yep. Um, we've got a senior and an apprentice. Yep. Um, I've rung the bank. I've rung the ATO. I've rung the super fund. Yep. And all of them have said, can't tell you anything, don't know anything yet. What? Uh, what? Yep. It's just, they're just they making it what so, so difficult. Right. So the short answer is the ATO can do stuff, but you'll find the people who have put on the public lines don't know. So we literally have been doing this for a week of dealing with the debts, the deferrals, the payment plans with the revisions we've been doing them for more than a week so since last Monday so you might want to talk to your advisor speak to them they might be able to actually enact it the ATO site for you um, one of my staff's partner is in the credit department in Bank West here in WA and they are actually freezing mortgages as we speak my business partner froze his mortgage because we're, we're okay but you just never know so we want to build the war chest of cash um, Suncorp he's with they've frozen his mortgage already. So I yeah, think it might um, be a matter of speaking I, Yeah, to Suncorp is, I rang Suncorp. <laughs> what I would do is try, he managed to get his through. The one thing um, that you can do is, to, did you use a mortgage broker to get your loan? Did I? Use a mortgage broker to get your loan. No, well, we, we haven't actually, we've got a small overdraft. We haven't actually got a loan as such. Gotcha. Um, so but I'm, I'm just finding that everyone seems to be very confused and not really knowing what's going on. Yeah, and what that is is normally because they put the um, non-trained staff on the front. It's like the ATO. We, we've been having lots of clients coming to us going they've tried to do stuff with the ATO and they can't get it through. We're, we get, we're just push, pushing them through because we're literally telling the examples. no, you can do this. You go to this screen and you are doing it right now. And literally they then go, Oh, I didn't know you could do that. That's how stupid it is. We're training the ATO. Um, just on a side note, just so you can all have the humour, we're experiencing the same thing because they're telling us we still need to do all of our tax returns by 15th of May, but giving us no extra time while we're dealing with their mess because they haven't made it easy. We've got to ring up, do all the analysis for each client. It takes two hours to do it for a client, make sure everything's right and getting all the maximum out of everything. Why can't we do tax returns if I'm doing that? And they haven't given us any extensions. So, yes, it's not just you. We're, we're feeling the pain at both ends. So I guess what you've got to do is with the ATO, is probably engage an advisor, try and get your accountant or advisor to try and do it, but they need to know what they're doing to force it through. So we're just ramming it through. We're just telling the ATO, you know, you're doing it. or well, we're not getting off the bones. And we ask when they won't. This is what I would say with the bank. Ask for the supervisor. So they put, all, they put all the non-trained people on the front to try and just steer you off. The ATO has actually been directing people back to their accountants when they're calling direct. It's been hilarious. And then they're not like, and then we call to do it and then they can't even do it because they don't know they can do it and then we have to train them how to do it. It's just a joke. It's a farce. So with the banks, if you're experiencing the same problem, you're in an industry where it's shut. It's not like you're not shut. So there should be no excuse. The bank and the ABA are saying that they will do it no problems. Just ask for a supervisor. Just ring up and say, no, I want to speak to the supervisor. I know that this is permissible. The a and you say the ABA, which is the Australian Banking Association, has said I can do this. I'm in an industry close down and just be bullied. Just ask for a supervisor. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. So literally grab it by the you know what and just go, no, yeah, I'm getting off the phone until that. someone tell, talks to me. And that's, that's what you, you know, and it's hard because, you know, it's the last thing you want to do while you're stressed out, you're worried, your business is fine. Oh, no, it actually is good for stress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Greg? Yeah. Oh. Where have we gone? I've, lo I've lost some audio there. Uh, can you hear me, Frank? I can hear you, but I can't hear you, Jackie. Okay, let's try that again. Go. Jackie. So the beauty side of the business has been closed down. Yep. But not the hairdressing. Yep. Now, I think 
John might have one client today. Um, what? Because you were saying that we actually have to be told by the government to close down before we can actually claim any of this stuff. No, not, no not necessarily. So all the ATO stuff, there is oh, no issue. That's what I understood. So, yeah, no. So the ATO side is pretty much like um, you've already been affected. The reality is if you have yeah. a hairdressing client, it's like it's obvious. You, you're on a downturn. So all the variations, everything with the ATO is possible. I'm even doing it for clients that aren't feeling it yet, but they know that their books are dead as of like probably a week or two. They've got that much work and they're dead. So we're already implementing it now because there's no point waiting because we know that they've got no work in the pipeline. So those clients, we're doing it. So no, you can implement all the ATO stuff pretty much straight away. The banking stuff, you should be able to implement I, I, I've had other clients in your situation in your industry and they've they've not had a problem. They've had a problem getting it because you've got to just demand and get to the supervisor and then they've done it. So it's just a matter of being, like literally, like I say, just grabbing by the short and curlies and yank as hard as possible and scream until they give it up. My Sorry, Greg, I'm a country boy, everyone, so I come from the central wheat belt, so you have to forgive me. <laughs> My, uh, I know that a lot of small businesses, Frank, are... Uh, um, are afraid of voluntarily shutting down in case that cuts them off from any of these benefits. And my um, my wife Michelle uh, works for an orthodontist, and she has re that, that orthodontic that chain of clinics has remained open because they're afraid of if they voluntarily shut down, that will prejudice their chances of getting any help. Correct. And most of the time, what you might do is stand down staff but you wouldn't close the business. So what you do is you go, look, our doors are shut, but you're still operating in the background doing stuff. The ATO is not indicated to us that nothing from their side at this point is saying that's an issue because we've already got travel agents that are shut. Like, they were hit first hit. Like, literally, they were bugging right from the start. So they got walked right from the beginning of this because people cancelled immediately as soon as this all blew up. So my partner is actually a travel agent. Um, he is literally got no income, zero income. He's applied for the coronavirus payment. We're getting the minimum 10000 because he runs his own agency. So we just put $1,000 worth of wages through because that's all that there is left. Um, so literally he'll still be entitled to this $1,500 because he's been stood down. The business is still there, but he's been stood down because he can't operate. There's, like Who's going to book a holiday? Let's be honest. You know. So the reality is... Um, I don't think it's going to make that much of an issue. But if you run your own business, you still have stuff going on. So I don't believe like shutting, shutting down is going to be an issue. A lot of my own hairdressers have already shut. They've just gone, nah, we're not going to get within 1.5 metres. It's ridiculous. I'm seeing 30 people a day. And like, it's, there's no way you can social distance. It's just not physically possible. So many of them have just already gone, no, nah, we're not seeing clients. Um, but no, I know there is that concern out there. And yes, it is possible, but what we're getting back on the ATO is I don't think that that's an issue. A lot of these payments, even the $1,500, the rumour mill and what we're getting from our contacts is that it will be backdated because they know that business is already closed. Like, you know, they've got the staff there, they're sitting at home doing nothing. Frank, question from Vivian in, um, in Launceston. Um, she says, I've stood down two staff, not terminated, with a view of being ready to run when back going again. Am I better to terminate them and re-employ them they both have uh, access already to government supplements what's the what's the well, go there yeah so like there's a double-edged sword here because obviously if you terminate them you're paying out the payg you've got a cash flow pool so the reality is the cash flow that you're gonna have to pay them out hits you now the other the other side of the coin is you're paying the, the wage taxes on the terminations now which will go into the march pass will help you with the stimulus payment we spoke about to start with so there's that, but then if you stand them down, this supplement that's supposedly coming today with wages for staff may not be applicable because you've terminated them. So the problem we've got right now is that we don't know what that's going to look like as to what we're going to do on the other side. So the, so, the, so the best advice of Vivian would be don't terminate, stand them down for now. But for the moment, until we find out today what, what on earth the detail behind this wage subsidy is going to be, because it may be if you want to, you might want to terminate, you know, those staff, we've all had them, where you go, you know, this is probably the time to get rid of the dead wood. You might terminate those, get those gone. The ones that you want to keep, 
wait and see what this stimulus does today, the wage supplement, and see if it's going to be easier to keep those on the $1,500 a fortnight, if, depending on what that number looks like, depending on how it's all been calculated. You might want to do that rather than take more on the supplement because you're going to go, well, at least I've got the staff, and at the other side, I don't have to then go, you know, recruitment agent fees or go through the 55,000 people that are going to be on seat when you put an advert out and you're going to have a disaster trying to find a good one um, at that point. So I guess it's, it's really a waiting game with that. So with those now, what I'm saying to the clients, get rid of the devil, terminate them, get it sorted, because that's, it stops you, you know, yes, you pay the cash down, but you terminate it. The good ones, maybe wait just for today, see what is announced, and then work out the strategy from there. Okay. Um, yeah, good. Thanks, uh, Vivian, for that question. Now, any other questions? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, um, who have we got one from Rita here over in uh, New South Wales? Go ahead, Rita. Um, you, uh, Frank, you said that um, this 10,000 or the 50,000 credit is for people that have um, a company or a trust. I'm a sole trader, but I employ 11 girls on a casual basis. So you should be fine. It's I've... about your PAYG registration. So Okay. Uh, normally people with your size, they're not as a sole trader because it's not very tax effective and you're running a lot of risk in your own name. So normally people in your situation aren't as a sole trader. Right. So, yes, if you're employing people, it's fine. It's just difficult because you can't employ yourself. So if you were in a trust, you would be employed by the trust, which would then potentially make it easier with the stimulus package because you can't pay yourself wages from yeah. yourself. So I won't be so, able to claim that money that's being given as wages then because I don't draw a wage. For you, no, but for your staff, yes. Yeah. So for your staff, you'll get it. For you, you won't. Right. Yeah, and, and this is the hole in the system that they're trying to pick up with this wage subsidy because they're trying to say, well, you as a sole trader, if you're completely shut, then you might be able to get $1,500. Um, and that's what we think that this is trying to happen today. Yeah, you know, and that's where they're trying to cover it up because what what's happening now? The first lot was trying to keep people employed by saying we'll pay the wage tax for you up to that level. You just keep paying their salary, you know, their, their cash component, and we're going to cover the rest for you. That was the concept we're trying to keep people employed. So it's like your staff, if you kept them employed, what you would do, you know, they're paying the wage taxes, and you just pay the cash that you would pay them. And so, so what do you do because um, if they're on casual, some work two days a week, some work three, some work one, what happens there? Well, essentially, the stimulus itself is obviously just based off the wage tax that's run through your payroll. So whether you're using right. Mod, Zero, whatever program you're using, that will just automatically run off that. Um, and there's not a lot you can do. That essentially will just run its course. Um, you know, You've got no annual leave, anything like that, because mm. you're running as casual, so yeah. they don't have those costs to bring forward. You don't have the termination costs because you're not terminating. Um, I did hear something interesting, though, for everyone about one of my clients here in WA spoke to someone in their work and they're saying if you stand down, you don't necessarily have to pay them out their annual leave and long service leave. Now, I don't know how true it is. That's what I got told this morning. I'm not a HR person. That's a whole different conversation, mm -hmm. but that's what I heard. I don't know how it really is, but I know I think it depends also on what state and what award they're on, but anyway, that's just a side issue. Right. And just one more question. Sorry. Um, no. When you said there's 10,000 um, credit on the tax account, or a 50,000 credit, is that just on the withholding tax? So if the withholding tax is more than 10,000 a quarter, you're in that bracket. If your withholding tax is up to 50,000, you get a higher amount. Is that right? Correct. So it comes down to the amount of wages. So it's literally yes. based on the withholding. So okay, the minimum not, the, not the gross wage. The no, tax. it's okay. just on the wage taxes. So it's okay. on that number that goes in the wage tax box on your business activity statement yep. or what we call the storm activity statement. If you okay. Know. All right, so thank you. So it's all about looking at those numbers yes. um, and seeing what you can do to try and manage that situation in a much better way. And mm. that's why I'm saying those dead wood ones, you may want to terminate so that you can, you know, at least the wage taxes are covered by the ATO if you're going to have to terminate them later you might be better off to do it sooner and when it stops your body your cash flow your wages going forward for you they're all on casual so you're not going to have that issue so just one more thing i, I didn't understand you because they're on casual and they might be allowed 1500 um a fortnight 
But yeah. if they didn't earn 1500 a fortnight, what? We don't know because that's the mechanism. So I don't know if they're going to do it as like, I think uh, the UK's or, um, and Canada's is something like you get 50% of your wages up to £2,500 for them or like here we're expecting it to be like 50 or 70% of your wage up to 1500 that makes sense? So it's going to okay. be a question of how It'll be pro rata. Pro rata, yeah. Yeah, pro-rata. and we, we just don't know, you yeah. know, because it, it would be a bit unfair, I would have thought, if someone who works a day a week gets 1500 bucks, when someone who's working five days a week still gets 1500 bucks. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't honestly know. Um, at this point, we've got no detail. All right. Thanks, okay. Rita. Anyone else have a question of, of, of Frank? Yes, uh, Effie down in, um, in in Hobart. Go ahead, Effie. Effie? Hang on. Perfect. Um, Hello. Hi, Frank. Uh, just a quick question. I think I heard this right, but I'm not sure. You were talking about coronavirus payment, the one-off 750 yeah. that um, the government's giving. So I've got staff who have told me that they can't get it because it's income tested. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so there is an income test. There's no asset test. So because for many of the partner makes more than forty-eight, whatever. Money. Right. right. Okay. I think it's over forty-eight thousand. Yeah. I think forty-eight one hundred. Um, I think. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a Centrelink person. But it's just yeah. like in the terms of I don't. I don't focus on that side. But I know that for many of the business owners here, the the thing is, I guess what I'm getting to you is even for yourself, if it comes to a point where the business is completely, you know, there's no hairdressing, there's nothing. You can go and try and get that. And they're not going to assess it because a lot of business owners will know you'll have a home. A lot of people on the Centrelink don't have a home with a great lot of assets. You might have an asset with a mortgage on it, but you still got three hundred dollars, thousand worth of equity. That would disqualify you from a normal Centrelink payment because you have an asset worth that much. Yeah, the Centrelink is saying no asset test. It's just based on income. So if you do have a partner that's an engineer still earning a hundred thousand, you'll be knocked there. Yeah. But yeah, you know if you're both out. It means that you can still keep your asset, put it on, you know, put it on hold, and you can still get something to feed yourself and pay the electricity bill and that sort of thing. So that's where the advantage for business owners is there for us, you know, to try and keep all that going, and you're not going to lose your home because you can at least feed yourself with the home. Okay, one more question. I know you said it's not your area of expertise, but I just thought I'd ask in case you've heard. I have a trainee. Um, yep. And so I've stood down all my staff, apart from my casuals, which obviously I had to um, give them a separation certificate. Um, yep. With the trainee, I don't know what to do with her because I know I get a subsidy for her. So I sort of have waited to see what's going to happen because I haven't stood her down. I just said I'd keep her on the books for now. Yep. Um, and she's got um, holidays anyway in case I can't keep her on. But yes. what my question is is, if she stood down, does she not? Do I not get access to the funds that are available for her? The short answer is we still don't know. Well, no, no one knows because I've know. rung the uh, the trainee yeah. board. I've rung Centrelink. No. Nobody knows, and I've got a staff member exactly. who has no idea what I'm doing with her. Yeah, because the trainee. I'm just having a look. Sorry, I'm just reading some of my notes here because it's supposedly assessments are going to be undertaken by the Australian Apprenticeship Support Network. Now, provider are going to do that, but I don't think you, those providers know exactly what they're doing yet either. No. So this is the problem. So it's like us with the ATO. It's only by us ringing fifty-five thousand times, trying different things, that we've discovered these deferrals. We've discovered this because they're written in a little, little baby, baby little thing down the bottom that no one's ever read. So we just tried everything and then worked it all out. And I think that's all you can keep doing is just ringing and going. What do I do? What do I do? What are you guys doing? So I just go to whatever this is, the Australian Apprenticeship Support Network provider that you use and and just keep hammering them until they get some clear direction. But they're saying that they're, they're going to backdate supposedly the subsidy equal to 50% of the, the trainees' wages. Yeah, so there is a good January, amount yeah. that's sitting in there, which will be yeah. good. But whether you step them, I mean, I don't know. What I'm finding frustrating with this is we all need to know because you need to know how to limit your cash outflow and how do you do that when I don't know what I'm going to get. So it's all happening too slowly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I can't really, I, I wish I could help you. <laughs> I mean, no, that's okay. You know, 
Uh, I've tried, okay. yeah, three different people give me three different answers, so it's just really hard. No one knows. Welcome to the tax office. We get yeah. like, every right. time we call, it's like, we can't do that. It's like, yes, you can. So well, I have, <laughs> my husband works for Centrelink, so it's even worse. He gives me a different answer. Oh, so. yeah, you should be giving us the, the, the tutorial today. <laughs> there you go. Frank, I've got a question. For those who have mortgages or loan repayments for the business yeah. and you cannot get through to the bank, you cannot get uh, through to anyone to, to uh, ease, you know, to get the six month um, holiday. Yep. yep. And you have payments coming automatically out of a bank account. Is it an idea if you can't get through and get this arranged, take that money out, put that account to zero, put it somewhere else? so that the account doesn't get raided until you can get through to the to the institution? Well, quite possibly. I mean, we don't know. Like, I haven't had any clients in that situation and we just don't know what their situation is because one concern that of one of my clients who is concerned about their credit rating and what they've got fed back from the bank is that, no, putting it on suspension won't affect your credit rating, nothing in writing, um, and that was with Macquarie. Um, and that's what they've said, that they don't believe it is, but she's still a bit nervous to do it because it might affect your credit rating. I don't think that they will affect the credit rating because the simple reason is I think we, within by May, June, I think every person in Australia with a mortgage is going to be on referral. I don't know many people that won't be. Um, you know, it's only a matter of time till the mines over here in WA for those of you over east are going to close, but, you know, we're all hoping that they won't. <coughs> but, you know, I think that's where it's going to sit. Okay, so... Um, uh, Short answer is I don't know, but, like, if you're really cash flow tight, you may want to do it. It may default, but what I would be doing is sending an email to them through whatever email channel you've got. Go, I approach you on this day. You wouldn't answer. I've done everything I can. Don't ping me because it's not my fault that you don't have enough people answering your phones. Good you know, Unless you've got some arguable position, maybe. Good advice. Um, Effie. I think Effie's got, yeah. Yes, oh. Can I say something about that? There's actually a link to, sorry, there's actually a link to all the banks that you can actually do it online. Um, and that's how we've yeah. done all ours and they get back to you, yeah. but you've actually put it in to say you Set want to stop them. it. Yeah. yeah. And I same with merchant the... too, merchant um, facilities too. Perfect, yeah. Because I had a client send me links. I didn't know if they were available or not, but one yeah. of my mortgage brokers sent it to one of my clients saying, here's a link. It is, and it, li it lists all the banks and all their links to the bank, and you can actually, I did one on Saturday night, did them all, and it asks you for all the loan numbers, and you put them straight through. So Beautiful. it's because what it's so congested. Um, I can give it to Greg if he wants to give it to, I just got it from my yeah. husband from Centrelink, and he, yeah. No, that would be good. Through. Yeah, because yeah, like, I've just been doing these stimulus packages, so I haven't had my head up to really deal with a lot of that side of it, the practical Bolts of it because I've just yeah. been too busy going, you know, varying installments and everything. Put it through. Uh, if you put it through on the chat in the chat. Uh, yeah, I'll you know. find it now and I'll pop it through. Thank that, you. that was really easy because I had all the banks there and it was just so easy to do. Okay, thank you. That would be great. Yeah. Anyone else with a question? Who else has got a question for Frank? Um, Rita. Um, one more from Rita. One more. Sorry about the. Um, the separation certificate, I've done that with a few of my girls so they can go on New Start to get 550 yes. a week. Have I done the wrong thing? Because if they can get this 1500 a fortnight, maybe it's better not to give the rest of the staff the separation certificate. Potentially, what, and that may be the case, but I don't, you know, there may be clauses in there saying, well, if you have been terminated, you know, or separated, I, I, we just don't know. But I would say I would hold off doing it just until we find out about more about this announcement. Okay. Because if All you right. can stand them down, you say to them, well, look, you're not going to get any pay from me, like the government will pay you pay them, but at least it might be better than the Centrelink payment. And that okay. may be the way to go. We just, without the new announcement, we just don't know. All right, so just hold off for a while. Hold off until we find out. The announcement's supposed to happen this afternoon sometime, I suppose, time. So hopefully shortly we might hear more. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. So um, is a separation certificate classed as termination? I think, I think. well, it depends on how they're going to define it with the tax. Right. And this is half the problem because, like, the definitions we're getting from the ATO, it's like, it's like this ridiculous. It's, if I promote to you that you should pay more wages, then I'm a tax promoter and it's like I'm certainly not promoting that. Mm -hmm. But I've got to explain how the stimulus works and leave it to clients. But it's like, well, you want the stimulus to be used to keep the clients alive. Well, you can't pin the clients later because they're trying their best to save themselves. Yeah. 
It's like I find the whole thing conflicting from the tax office and it's very frustrating when they're saying, oh, here, you can have it, but we'll Indian grab it back and say, no, you can't have it. Don't do anything to try and help yourself out. It's just ridiculous, you know, but mm-hmm. anyway, that's the government. Okay. Sharon. Thank you. Sharon? Hi. Hi, Frank. Great. Hi. And um, we've got two hair salons in WA and yep. we haven't, we're not shut down yet. They've yep. not asked us to shut down. We've suspended our apprentices and we've laid off our casuals. But, and the girls, no one wants to work. I don't want to work. Um, no. You know, I think I don't want to come into contact with people. No. This totally. We've been told, though, that if um, we're not open, we won't receive this stimulus. Well, you know, yeah. It's a question of, and this is where the stimulus is talking about, you keep people employed. Now, if you, you just put people, put people on stand down and you're not sacked, then they're still technically employees. So our best interpretation of it to date, and we'll, the knowledge we've got so far, is that, well, if they're still down, you're still, you're still effectively there, you're just hibernating. So there shouldn't be a problem with doing that. Okay, so, but if we stand down, don't you then have to, like if we were to shut and it's our choice to shut, um, don't we then have to give them like the three weeks notice? Well, I think, well, what my other client told me, and this is more of a fair work question because it comes back to the side of my other client said that they didn't have to pay the annual leave long service, so they're still on the books, but they just sit there in hibernation. They're not required to pay it out or give like mm. term periods. But that's what they were told by what they research they had done. I, mm. again, I haven't gone to like because it's like everyone else, everyone's ringing them and getting different answers. So, Short answer is, I wish I could give you more info. But no, we've spoken, to wage line, we've spoken to wage line, fair work, and it's different opinions. Everywhere you and go. Just think, yeah. we, can't, we can't afford for six full-time stylists, three weeks' no. notice, and then... And then, actually, hang on. No, and this is where I think today it might resolve the problem because all the businesses are in the same situation. That's why um, I re- wrote a submission myself for my own accounting practice and I've also done it for through the Institute of Chartered Accounts because I'm a chartered accountant. And we've all made application just hurry the fuck up with this wage subsidy because we're going to have to let staff go. We cannot keep doing this. Um, and that's why I think it's all been rushed through in such a bloody funeral because they just they know that there's going to be hundreds of thousands going out in the next week. Mm. So hopefully today it might answer a lot of our questions. But, uh, you know, I was trying to research before I came on this conference call and there's, like, you know, you're looking at ABC, you're looking at all these, you know, you're trying to go to Treasury website but nothing's giving you any clear direction. It's just, oh, it's $1,500 potentially mm. and that's it. Well, it's like, well, Tell us what the parameters are. We don't know, so we can then either sack staff or keep them. What are we doing? But I think okay. today and hopefully this afternoon there'll be some treasury notes and we might actually be able to know what's going on. I'm gonna I've unmuted everybody. Um, who who else has a question of, of Frank? Anyone? We're all happy? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Hopefully I've helped guys. I know it's difficult because we're well, I, I know the things I can do from the tax side because we've been absolutely hammering the ATO. So all I say to you is I know that they're all available and they're all doable as of today. So you can get off, off here today, call your advisor, smack them over the head and if they say, no, you can't do it, it's an absolute lie because I'm literally doing them. Like I've got two staff out on my floor right now who should be at home but we just can't cope um, with the volume we're getting. So I've only got two in out of all my staff and all they're doing is on the phone is doing one after another. So it's all possible right now. So um, if anyone, I mean, are you ta- are you able to take on any new clients at the moment, Frank? I can, but we are at peak. So it's just like if anyone needs a hand, they can try and give us support. Um, you know, and we're just trying to shuffle people in the best we can. I'm getting them from coming off the street, even business owners, because their accounts just can't help them. So we're doing our, our best with what we've got. Okay. All right. Well, if anyone's in, if anyone needs that kind of help, um, come through me, and I'll uh, I'll get you Frank's uh, contact details here in in Perth. Um, Frank's been brilliant for us for many years, and uh, highly recommend um, him. He uh, he he works magic with figures. I don't even understand how he does it. I don't even want to know. Uh, he just does it. <laughs> All right, I, I may managed to get Greg to actually calm down about his situation, and we all know Greg is a bit of a challenge at times. 
And uh, yeah, I think I think he's he can breathe now. He actually can have some oxygen in those lungs. He hasn't got Corona economic virus, we'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, look, and for those of you on the east coast, like all the best with the Victoria and New South Wales clients. Like I know we're like over here in WA. It's like we're trying to do what Tassie does. I know someone's there from Tassie, and it's like we're trying to lock up the borders, stop everything because mm. we're we're getting a lot coming from over east. So our premier is a bit. Seems a bit aggressive to uh, East Coast clients because I have them all across this because I've got clients in every state and territory in Australia. Um, but I'm saying to the clients, yeah, but if you were over here with no resources, how do you feel if you get dumped with a huge amount of it? We can't just get something from Sydney or Melbourne and it takes days to get here. So but anyway, there you go. Best of luck to you guys. Thank you. Greg, right, can good. I just say one more thing? Sorry. Just one more thing. Um, I'm not sure because I wasn't aware of this either, but the um, state government's also giving... Um, uh, some packages to um, us, beauty salons. So you should check what your state government's offering because I've just been given some grants um, in the last week for yeah. myself and yeah. my staff too, So, yes. which is always so good. I meant to mention that, yeah. So every state is different, so we just don't know. Like, if it comes down to your state, you just have to contact mm -hmm. like the same territory. All of them have got some sort of pay relief, but I doubt whether most of you would be over yeah. Generally, the thresholds range from 550 in some states up to a million dollars in others. The payroll tax, if you have a lot of wages, they charge you a state-based tax, for those who are not aware of it. There's a lot of relief in that area, but there are also some grants in some states. Okay, Na Nancy's got a question. Um, go ahead, Nancy. Nancy, you've got your hand up. Can't hear you. Okay, maybe that'll have to be one that uh, we address later on, Frank. Um, no all right. If there's no more, no more questions, thank you very much, Frank. Um, no worries. The best I can thank say. You. Hello. Who's who? And big hugs to everyone. Stay home and just do your best. And the best thing about this is it will end. So, what we have to be ready for is when it ends, um, we're ready to go and bring business back in the door. So, um, Sam and I and others here at WSM are working on a. Um, restart package, a marketing package, which all our members will have access to. And uh, we'll be, I, don't, I know that there's no point in even worrying about that for the next few weeks, but that will be ready to go by the time the government says, right, you can all open your doors again. Frank, uh, thank you all. For, thank you for uh, your time. I know that, I know you're going to send me the bill. The no, meter's okay. been running since, uh, since 10 o'clock. That's all right, mate. <laughs> Thanks very much. And, uh, all right. Do, do Have your a best. Great day, everyone. guys. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye. Thank Bye. you.